Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is episode six of book two, The Sting. This is the only episode where the focus is not on Korra, but Mako is the main protagonist here. Book two is my least favorite in Legend of Korra, but this season had the best in store for Mako. Mako was supposed to be the Prince Zuko of Legend of Korra, but honestly, Mako doesn't come close to being even considered a character in front of Zuko. Zuko is a character that was written with precision. He had so much depth. To be honest, writing a character like Zuko in The Legend of Korra was never possible because ATLA was planned to be a three-season show. But Korra was always uncertain. There was no room to plan a character arc like Zuko. Book two laid a good buildup for Mako's character arc. He was flawed and did weird things, and he could have had great character development, but the writers didn't capitalize on this. In the end, Mako was just dull and boring. But anyhow, this is his episode, so we won't take anything away from him now. This is the fourth episode in The Legend of Korra that starts with a boat or ship. This is the third in book two. While overall, with Avatar The Last Airbender, this is the tenth episode that starts in the presence of a boat. They fenced the area around the portal and set up camp really fast. Were you just in the spirit world? Never mind that. When Unalak came from the spirit world, he probably met Vatu and discussed their future plans. I have some theories that suggested that Unalak wasn't that bad and whatever he said about the spirits was true when he met Vatu. Vatu persuaded him to be bad. Unalak wanted the best for the spirits and humans. But at this point, as long as the creators don't confirm, all we can do is make theories. The Southern Water Tribe is mine. Next, I will conquer the world with my waterbending doomsday device. The evil Unalak in the movers is totally a copy of Ozai from the Ember Island play. I don't think the creators were really sure what to put in book two, so they put everything in it. They put movies, civil wars, the story of the first ever avatar, gigantic spirits, Crazy ideas of a rich billionaire? If the book had one or two extra episodes, who knows what else we would have seen. The mover is mostly watched by kids, so I don't think that'll help in getting sympathy for the Southern Water Tribe. In this episode, Tenzin and his family don't have any appearance, probably because of Bolin's first mover. I am not a fan of the movers, so I will just skip this. Julie, haven't I told you I hate getting bad news without first getting good news? Uh, well, the good news is it looks like your first mover has gotten a great reception. That's old news! Mako is very saddened by the fact that he broke up with his girlfriend. He's probably learning something from it. We were ambushed about 30 clicks outside the harbor. We never heard them coming. Now we know that the ship at the start of the episode was taking the mecha tanks and the planes to the south to help them fight the north. The captain of the ship has the Future Industries logo on his cap, so I think I could have figured it out from this. Without that sail, I don't know how much longer I can keep my company going. What am I gonna do? Don't worry. I'm gonna find who's ever responsible. Ooh, that's some big words coming out of a rookie's mouth. But in Mako's defense, he did crack the case, so good job, rookie. It's gotta be Northern Water Tribe. They're trying to stop supply lines to the south. I agree. The people who attacked were wearing the Northern Troops uniforms, so I think the North should have been ultimately the prime suspect. The bombs exploded in a way I've never seen before. They didn't have fuses. It was like they were being detonated remotely. This also confirms that the remote detonators are a new thing. This type of detonator was invented in the 1940s in our world, but since the Avatar is a bit ahead of us, it was invented about 20 years early. Asami, I heard the news. I can't believe they took my fifth favorite ship in the Varric Industries fleet. Named her after my mom. Rest in peace, Rocky Bottom. I had a hard time understanding this joke, but now I think it's a PG way of saying hard ass. Yeah, let's all listen to the rookie. He's doing a better job than you. Who's hungry? Enough! Did you notice what Varric is trying to do here? He is trying to sabotage this conversation because he doesn't want Mako to be on this case. Because, duh, he is the one behind everything. The guy might act dumb, but he has a genius little brain inside his skull. When he saw the detonator, he thought, where did Mako get that from? He knew that he had to distract Mako because he is getting closer to cracking this case. A sting operation. I was thinking we'd set up a bait ship, take it out into the open ocean, and capture whoever attacks it. Let's do it. It's not that easy. Beifong said that this is the third attack this week in the same location. So I think the cops should have already increased the security around the area and done what Mako's just said. First of all, we'd need a ship. 
Look! Ah! Varric is not missing any chance to see what Mako is up to. He really wants to get on this case, and Mako has actually made Varric's job easier. Perfect! I love not knowing things! All right, I'm in. Mako was literally against Korra's plans, and here he didn't need much to agree with Asami for going behind Beifong's back. Isn't this a bit of hypocrisy? The less you know, the better. Perfect! I love not knowing things! After the attack on the ship, Asami is being cautious, and she is not completely trusting Varric. Not yet. We need some extra manpower. What about Korra? No better muscle than the Avatar. Damn it, Asami! Mako said manpower, not woman power. Just kidding. It's supposed to be a bad joke. Don't take it seriously. But this is Mako's episode, so we don't need Korra. Is this a marble statue of you? It's also a hat rack. So Bolin is the first one of the new team Avatar to get his statue. Although it's the statue of Nuktuk, hero of the South. Still counts. I remember seeing the original storyboard of this scene where Bolin was shirtless. I don't know why they changed it. You need my help. Ugh, I don't know. I'm kind of busy. The scene is also meant to present how people change when they become superstars. It didn't take too long for Bolin to show a spoiled star attitude. I think Varric might have also had a hand in this. He knows that Mako will ask for Bolin's help since Korra is out of town. So he fed Bolin some gibberish like how Mako treated him when they came back to Republic City, and that's why Bolin is being like this. I mean, it's my theory, but it makes sense. <laughs> Mako, do you want to burn your brother? I know it's just a joke, but he could have literally boiled Bolin. A boiled Bolin? Wow, that doesn't sound too bad. I am personal friends with the Avatar. I might be able to convince her to give Shady Shin his bending back. After what you did to Korra, I don't think you are convincing her to do anything. I've got vehicles, all brand new and top of the line. Who can say no to brand new cars? The flag here looks like it's just waving in the air, and the pole also looks shorter when compared to this shot. You broke up? When? Why didn't you tell me? Because you don't have to know everything. Plus, Mako is still processing it. Your girlfriend's about to die, and instead of untying her, you kiss her. Wait a minute! Maybe that will work! Yes! It's genius! So, this is how the weird scenes that make no sense in the movies come to life. And that's why they call me Two-Toed Pig. Because you have two extra toes. That's right! And there was already a Twelve-Toed Ping on the south side. So, this means he was excited to call himself 12-toed ping, but somebody said no, 12-toed ping is taken, how about 2-toed ping? Mako is so shocked thinking, all this time I thought this was just a weird made-up name, now I see why. Mako is having a hard time processing all this. Now Asami is invested in this so deeply. After Mako used a powerful firebending move, we can see in this frame that Viper is missing his chain. Mako's firebending technique is very disciplined. He mostly remains still and doesn't lose his balance. Shady Shin doesn't have a beard in this frame. He is very efficient. He managed to shave his beard while driving. The reaction of Asami is captured really nicely here, from the hair physics and her reactions as she drops down. The ships are actually really far from one another, but when Asami gets near them, they were literally crossing each other. It looks like Asami took a U-turn and waited so the ships will get closer. It wasn't shown on screen, but I think this is what happened by the looks of it. Asami has great driving skills, as she was confident in herself that she could make it. It's not something she is praised for a lot. In this scene, if we zoom in, we can see that the third guy that is sitting in the back seat is wearing a blue top, but it's actually Two-Toed Ping who was wearing a black top. Does Viper have water inside his jacket? We saw him doing the same in the very first episode. Why don't you come and find out? We can see a strap around Viper's chest. I guess it's some kind of a water pouch? And I think it's genius. Mako's technique helps him keep balance without needing any foot movement, so he is always in a good position to attack. His fighting style is mostly a mix of boxing and karate. Maybe they didn't have time to hit them all. You don't understand. Everything I had was in here. We have to search the place for evidence. If we can find a lead. Mako in this situation might feel that he is the reason why all this happened. 
because the sting operation was his idea and he was the one who asked the triple threat triad for help. He also sees this as a failure because this was his chance to prove himself as a cop. It's a difficult situation for Mako. So the love triangle's back and it was also doomed again very quickly. One of the worst things about season one was the love triangle, and I thought they were done with it, but they brought it back. They actually had a love triangle planned in Avatar The Last Airbender between Aang, Katara, and Toph. And Toph was originally going to be a guy? I am so glad that didn't happen. But they went ahead with the idea of love triangle in The Legend of Korra. I thought they would learn from season one, yet here we are. Sorry. I... Uh, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, anyway... Mako wasn't sure who he wanted to be in the first season. When Korra was in danger, his feelings toward Korra got more dominant. And now, when he broke up with Korra, his feeling for Asami is coming back. There was no solution to this love triangle. Well, maybe a throuple. But whatever happened in the end was, I guess, the perfect one. I don't know! I think you do know. And you're gonna tell me, or we're gonna have to change your name to No Toad Ping. Using firebending with perfect precision to make a fire blade is a unique skill. As I have said many times, Mako is a very skillful firebender. After you left the hideout, some mook showed up and said his boss would pay us to keep you distracted. So, when Mako was going to meet with Triple Threat, somebody followed them on the order of Varric, and then later he paid the Triple Threat to keep them busy. How did you rig those explosions to go off like that? Neat, huh? It's a Varric Industries exclusive. Here, check it out. Varric used the same explosion in both the movers and the attack. I think he believes the police are too dumb to ever figure it out. But little did he know, we have the main protagonist. Well, only in this episode. But he still figured it out. What are you doing here? He just saved my company. Varric bought a controlling interest in future industries. Isn't that great? When Varric knew there's a war coming, he immediately thought of making a profit. He is a rich businessman, and he was actually on Korra's side in this war, but he still had to make some profit, hence he sabotaged the future industries so he could bail it out and become a partner in the company, cause they were set to make tons by selling weapons. Who's Avatar Korra? Korra is washed on the shores of an island, island in the Fire Nation. She has I lost her memory. Know. I have already discussed it in the previous episode, so I will not go into details. Korra almost didn't have an appearance in this episode. Korra remains the only character to have an appearance in every episode in the series. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.